today, uh, having been into this uh, uh, worldwide crisis for a year, I want you to focus on the blood of Jesus. The most powerful truth, powerful truth in the Bible is the blood of the Lamb of God. Yeah, it was first mentioned about the blood sacrifice that uh, forgives sins is in the book of Exodus. But the story actually could be traced back all the way to Genesis. After God has created men and women in His likeness, uh, with the uh, freedom to think, to choose, and to be responsible. So, they somehow didn't choose to obey what God has warned them. That's how sin had come into human life, and the consequences of sin like sickness, death, suffering, poverty, fear, shame, all these have come upon human life. Yeah, then the Bible, the story went on to focus at one man. That is uh, Abraham. All right. God has uh, moved his heart. I'm sure he wasn't the only person God spoke to his heart. When you read about Adam and Eve, obviously they were hearing God's voice. We know they say there was no sin that could have a direct communication with God. But when they have fallen, their conscience was active. They started to feel guilty. That means God was ministering to their spirit and their soul. Today, anybody, whether you are Christian or non-Christian, if you, like what Isaiah said, you know, uh, you just say in quietness, and you will feel God. Yes, especially in crises. When people just uh, don't want to worry, just be still for a while. That a while you may hear a powerful uh, wisdom or direction from God. Alright, so Abraham was a man. He heard the voice of God. That God, God called him out with a mission. He was just like other people you know, who had farm. Uh, who had uh, 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 many servants, but God called him to travel according to his direction. He was learning to obey the direction of the Lord. He was not supposed to take along his uh, uh, family, like his father, nephew, and the servants. He was supposed to travel towards where God di directs him to his wife, nobody else. So he was learning. So it is from Abraham we realize that God has given uh, a call, a call of salvation. Yes, and God wanted him uh, to offer an animal. That the, the blood sacrifice uh, started to, 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 to appear in the Bible. The blood sacrifice means that when you offer that animal to God, the animal dies. You are a sinner and you are spared from the judgment of sin. Yeah, the judgment of sin is death. So instead that the sinner die, the offerer die, the offering die, to spare him. So that is the earliest uh, revelation we call it in the Bible about blood offering and the sacrifice, uh, sorry, and the forgiveness of God. Then you went on to uh, some generations later, the descendants of Abraham landed in ancient Egypt and they stayed there for 430 years. At the very beginning, it was honor. Uh, it was an honor to them because they have helped uh, Egypt to, uh, to, to go through the worst uh, famine. But over some years, the kings, the pharaohs, felt uncomfortable, insecure with the uh, Israelites. So finally he laid pressure and eventually Israel had become uh, slaves in Egypt for a long time. Until a time they cried out to God 
God heard their cry. You see, you don't need to be good to cry out to God. I know we can, we can come to God and cry to God with a good intention. I go into some days of fasting uh, or partial fasting. I just want to focus on the Lord. But that's not the only way you will hear God. There are times you are in uh, the worst situation. You are not well and uh, you don't see any, uh, any solution. As long as you return to the Lord in quietness and stillness, you will hear the Lord. There will be some assurance inside. It can be, when God speaks, it's very simple and direct. God doesn't engage in argument. That's what I see in the Bible. Our God is very straightforward because it's a, it's a spirit of truth. So you just assure your heart, you won't die. You just assure your heart, you will not go bankrupt. You just assure your heart, even people who want to give you problem, you will not suffer. God can even go to that extent to say it from His heart to your heart. All right. So it was uh, when Israel cried out to the Lord in Egypt. God heard their groaning, and God raised up a Moses to take them out of Egypt. Right? That taking them is uh, a number of two to three million people. It definitely took a miracle from God, took the hand of God for that to be accomplished. So what happened was before all the exodus, God required uh, the people in Israel every home uh, in the evening slaughter uh, uh, lamb. Uh, for those who could not afford, a few family could share one. They keep the blood and to apply it on the door frame as a sign. All right, then they roast the lamb and eat, and they dress up, got ready, whatever is necessary to escape. So that Exodus is uh, it, it is a divine revelation. It's a God's is God's way for His people to escape from a judgment. All right, because uh, the sin of Egypt, especially their cruelty against God's people has reached a point that there is no more forgiveness. And God intended to cause uh, all the firstborn, whether of people, of human, or of animal, to die at night. So, but as for the family, they have the blood of the sacrifice, the blood of the Lamb of God uh, put on the door frame. This judgment of death of the firstborn will escape, will skip over will skip over, will pass over the family. So after that, uh, when uh, Israel was in Egypt, even until today, every year come to the time of commemorating the Passover, they will have a Passover dinner together. Uh, we know that about 2,000 plus years ago, God had decided to extend this salvation of giving people forgiveness, all people, not just the Jews, not just the Israelites. So he had allowed the second person of himself. Our God is a three in one God. So he allowed the second person of himself to become a human, but without sin. Alright? So through the body of Virgin Mary, the second person of God became a sinless man. With the mission, eventually, he would carry all the sins of the whole human race to be killed on the cross. And he became the sacrifice for the whole human race. The blood sacrifice of the whole human race. That's how when he started his ministry at the age of 30, the forerunner John the Baptist introduced him. This is the Lamb of God who has come to take away the sin of the world. So I believe that blood that Jesus shed on the cross had covered the sin of Adam until the last baby yet to exist. So it definitely covered all our sin. And all that we need to do is to believe in this good news, that God became a man to take away our sin. And we are saved. We are forgiven. Now that is the, 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 the chief message of the whole Bible. And uh, 
Revelation 12, 11 say, uh, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. This word they is referring to the end time church. It's referring to you and me. We can overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony means we say it. Every time when, let's say you are attacked by sickness or poverty or misfortune or anything, uh, anything that is unpleasant, you do not fight with what, how often you you pray. It's not how often you pray that gives you the power. It's as you pray those many days, even with fasting, your focus is Jesus. The second person of God, the Son of God, has become your blood offering. The blood that you shed on the cross has eternal effectiveness. You have defeated Satan, you have defeated sin, you have defeated sickness, you have defeated poverty. I believe the blood of Jesus has defeated COVID-19. Say amen. amen. By faith. Yes. We don't just know, follow the world. They just wait for somehow there could be a what, herd immunity. Or maybe by then now they have administered sufficiently the, uh, the, the, the vaccine. Now we don't just wait. Since the starting of February, the Lord put into my heart, tell your people the month of March is very important. I heard this even last year, I think around September. Uh, September. I try to understand is something good as related with the current pandemic. So then, to about September, the Lord gave me the month of March this year. Uh, so it was in the month of February, in, in all my posting, I started to say, join me by faith. We need to rise up. We don't just wait up for uh, uh, the natural uh, process of healing. We need to rise up to believe. Do you really believe the blood that Jesus shed on the cross that has covered all your sin? It is by that blood of His stripes you are healed. Amen? And when you believe in Jesus, no longer you who live, but Christ lives in you. You have become one spirit with Him. And because Jesus is in you, Father God also has made His residence in your life. Uh, and the Holy Spirit is in you. You are the temple of God, temple of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, those who have believed in Him, when the Holy Spirit comes out of their innermost, out of their spirit will flow rivers of living water. This time, in modern history, is the first time a sickness has spread throughout the world. It has killed millions of lives. Yeah, they have damaged many families. They have stopped all regular activities and even have collapsed some uh, industry. So if the pandemic ends uh, by end of this year or next year or five or six years time, after that, there will be still a long process of healing and restoration of the whole world. All right? Looks like uh, what people used to think that we are going to face a new normal. And uh, thank God it helped me to imagine, I realized a new normal will be a painful new normal. Maybe a lot of things we used to do to earn more money, to get more success, no longer will be valid. It will be a new way. Yeah. So now, a year into it, we start to realize that, well, likely, you know, uh, uh, a lot of things that we are going to do a different way. Yes, I think so. All right. So this blood of the Lamb is the it is our most powerful spiritual weapon. So church, we need to rise up. We need to know who we are. When we believe in the Lord Jesus, covered by this blood of the Lamb, we can release living water to benefit people. With the current pandemic, I believe we need to rise up. I happen to have challenged some people to do this. And I realized oh, almost everyone who I told them, Go into soaking, uh, remember the pandemic. Every one of us suffers some kind of strange attack. Uh, for me, I thank God uh, He has spared me from the terrible uh, uh, disease called dengue fever. When I had the fever, I didn't know. I thought it was just normal fever, took some panadol, but it was suppressed. And then, 
One thing I just saw, you know, uh, one evening I just saw uh, the, the uh, what do you call that, the uh, rashes on my on my legs. Then uh, the Lord put my heart go to a 24 hours clinic nearby. So Pastor Boy and I went there. Uh, that particular doctor still didn't quite. Uh, we what is the next morning? The next doctor he asked me to come back for the main doctor to check. Then by the blood test. Just confirmed that it was a dengue, and my blood count was 80, 48, right? Four. Yeah. 84. yeah, 84. 84. It is low, but not extremely low. But that doctor, he said that probably I have gone through the worst, <laughs> the worst drop of the planet. But uh, well, in my heart, I said, I thank God, I'm spared. <laughs> because the doctor keep on saying that you're 69, you're 69. So, so I just believe that God protects us when we do His job. Amen. The blood of Jesus covers us from the worst yet to happen. So if you are in attack uh, during this time when you intercede for the whole world, for God to intervene in this pandemic, you suffer any kind of misfortune, strange thing happening, until doctor can't explain it, you don't worry, you look at the blood. You are covered by the blood. Amen. Your job is covered by the blood. Your money is covered by the blood. Your family is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Just say amen. amen. Say it by faith. Hallelujah. So we are a covenant people guaranteed by the blood of the Lamb. So as God's people of the new covenant, let's just continue. Let's just persist in uniting our faith together, looking at Jesus these two months, uh, February last month and this month, as the Lord has said. I can't say further than that. What about April? I just want to believe that as we started to intercede, we see this uh, pandemic is on the downcline now. Yes, even in Malaysia, right? Before February, there, there were a few uh, a few weeks out, we were at the 4,000, 4,000 per day, right? Before, almost reached 5,000. And uh, then, Really, you know, in the Maya, we didn't know what to expect. Uh, would this uh, MCO2 help? I think probably it did, but I just believe that your prayer works better. Amen. So we started to see decline from four from the four thousand into the three thousand into the two thousand and of last week. Thank God, a few times it dropped below two thousand. Keep believing it that the blood of the Lamb can kill all the. COVID-19 viruses. Amen? Amen? Believe for it. Believe for it. Don't, don't, don't worry. But also be scientific since uh, vaccine is available uh, and all these should be making it simple. So just go to your that app uh, uh, well, sign it in, register and wait for information now. Hallelujah. Now, today I want to give you a few more scriptures on uh, the blood of the Lamb. As we meditate, I, I, I want you to really believe in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. John chapter 129. Uh, this is the first time the scripture uh, mentioned that Jesus is the Lamb of God. When John the Baptist introduced him, he said, This is the Lamb of God. He has come to forgive the sins of the world, to take away the sins of the whole world. And the second scripture is from Exodus 12, verses 21 to 23. I'll read to you. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick up and take lambs for yourself according to your families, and kill the Passover lamb. Alright, that lamb before the Exodus was specifically called the Passover lamb. Alright? The judgment of sin, the judgment of death will pass over when they eat of the lamb. And you shall take a bunch of Esau kind of uh, 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 plant, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the intel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out the door of his house till morning. 
for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the intel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. This is the earliest assurance in the Bible that there's something called covering of the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. So judgment will pass over. So when you believe in the Lord Jesus who has shed his blood, to forgive all your sin, you always have that effect of the blood over you. Yes. So, the judgment of death will not be upon you because the Bible says those who believe in the Lord Jesus, they will not die. That means their spirit will never go to hell. They are forgiven, completely forgiven. So as a Christian, since the moment you say your sinner's prayer, Every subsequent sin and wrong attitude or whatsoever or even serious sin can be forgiven. It is your moral, du moral duty before God to acknowledge a failure that you will be forgiven. Of course, you know, people who have not come under the blood of the Lamb, they may wonder, oh, that is very unfair. Well, that is the favor of God, the Bible said. Because no sinner, no non-Christian can forgive their own sin. So as Christian, you can't forgive your own sin. You ask God to forgive. The only difference is when you believe in the Lamb of God, that blood, the Passover, uh, the blood of the Passover Lamb is covering you eternally. Yes, it's by the blood we are saved, the Bible said. By the blood we are cleansed. By the blood will receive righteousness from God. Yeah, today you can draw near to God not because you are good. We can draw near to God because God is always good. He is good and His loving kindness and feels forever. We can come to God even at, the, at our worst time before God. We have doubted Him. We have complained. But still we say, Lord, forgive us. Huh? We come back to you and God will restrengthen you. God will open up doors again for you. God will pour out His blessing from heaven, from the open window from heaven, until you have no place to contain His overflowing blessing. Amen. Look at God this way. Sometimes like even in the church, people somehow keep on dwelling on, I don't think so I'm perfect enough to have a breakthrough. Your perfection will never give you breakthrough. Yes, your 40 day fasting doesn't give you breakthrough. The Bible never says it's what you do during the 40 days fasting. Yeah. There is a scripture in the book of Isaiah about fasting. That fasting is for you to undo you know, all your judgmental attitude, pointing your fingers at others. Yes, even in the Old Testament, under the blood, we live the heart of grace and understanding and mercy. Because every day we live under the mercy of God. His mercy is new every morning. Yesterday you might have doubted Him, but this morning God again poured new grace on you. Amen. Uh, Pastor Brother loved to train the grandchildren because he trained our children the same way. Every morning he said, it's a new day, uh, new grace. <laughs> Yes, believe in that. Train your children while they are young to believe in the grace of God is new every morning. Now, don't go into a kind of uh, repenting of your former sins if you have repented. When it is repented, it's covered under the sin, it's no more case. There's no more case, you are free. You see, in our nation, uh, during the, the king's birthday, sometimes they have the forgiving, uh, the pardoning of people. So our father is a king of kings. He give us a lifetime pardoning. When you believe in Jesus, you have the lifetime pardoning and the blood covers you. Uh, you are always spared from the judgment of sin and therefore return to the Lord and He will return to you. He returned to you not because uh, He wants to see uh, how humble you are. No, He will quickly return to you. Remember in the prodigal son uh, parable that Jesus said, the father 
was uh, every day uh, looking forward to see the sun returning. So when the sun, you know, was uh, coming back with all kind of embarrassment, dragging his feet, the father would run towards him. That's what uh, the Bible said. So when you come back to God, God will run towards you. Amen. When you cry out to God, you will respond from heaven. He will give you Exodus. The God of Exodus in the Old Testament is your God of Exodus. He always will deliver you out of the biggest trouble in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. When I was speaking until maybe 20 seconds ago, I feel the strength came to me. Good. Hallelujah. Okay. Jesus, uh, this scripture say, He is our Passover lamb. The blood he has shed has spared us from the judgment of sin in hell. Yeah. God has caused him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we may have the righteousness of God. No other book there to say that it's only in the book of God. There is this truth. God allowed his second person to become a human, sinless human just to stand for you for the judgment of sin so that you will be spared. Not just that you will be forgiven, you will be spared from judgment. He can even release the righteousness of God in your life. That's why when you believe in Jesus, you are a new creation. You are no longer a sinner. You are a child of God, a son or daughter of God. Yes, you have become joy and with Jesus. That means you are going to inherit whatever Jesus is entitled us of. Yeah, Jesus is being seated at the right hand side of God, which is considered as co-equal with God. First John chapter 4 says, God has given us perfect love, and the context is talking about God has given us his begotten, only begotten Son. Yeah, the book of Romans says when you believe in the Lord Jesus, you are an heir of God, joint heir with Christ. Therefore today, as joint heir with Christ, we are sharing Jesus' authority, being seated at the right hand side of God. Now join it with 1 John chapter 4. As Christ is, so are we in the world. Where is Christ now? He is being seated at the right hand side of God, the highest position, highest authority, highest power. You are seated there, you and I are seated there. Therefore, do not just keep this privilege for yourself when you meet problem. This is a pandemic. Let's just rise up and use this book, right? And join them with Jesus because we have come under the covering of the blood of the Lamb of God. We let the rivers of living water of the Holy Spirit flow out of us to the whole world. Amen. Now, of course, let it start uh, with your city. Uh, with the uh, Clang Valley and then the whole nation, whole Southeast Asia. Yeah. And believe in the covenant of blood of Jesus when you war against the devil, attacking the whole world now. You may get into a little bit of frontier, you know, uh, uh, warfare reaction, but don't fear, keep fighting. Amen. Yeah, I bless you. I bless those who have been fighting these two months against the COVID-19. Stop it from spreading. You may have suffered a little bit of health condition, but I bless you. I declare that you will have a miracle of strength, healing, health. Just say amen. Uh, if you suffer in other sense of your business, in your finance, uh, misunderstanding, well, I declare that you will be favored. Yes, because Jesus favor you, God favor you. People will favor you. That's what we learn from Joseph's blood. Because God's favor was on him, Pharaoh favored him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, there's a verse in the book of Isaiah say that when the time is right, God will do. God will do it. Yes, you may have prophecy, dreams, vision, and scriptures. God has spoken to your life because of the pandemic, it can't come to pass. But believe that when it has come to the right time, God will do it. Amen? Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, you are deeply loved. God loves you perfect love. You are highly favored because uh, the Greek word uh, translated accepted, you are accepted in Christ. 
when the angel used a Greek word to say to Virgin Mary, uh, it's translated in English as most favored, highly favored. So you are deeply loved, highly favored because you are in Christ. He has become poor to make you rich. You are blessed, richly blessed in Christ. Amen. And the Bible says that when you believe in the Lord Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, you have an anointing of the Holy One. The Holy One in the New Testament is referring to Jesus. It's not your ability, not by might, not by power, not your own might, own power, not even our wisdom or organizing planning. No, those are for business world. But when you operating together with Jesus, if Jesus is in you, His Spirit is in you, flowing out of you. Amen. Hallelujah. So actually, it's not you and I fighting against COVID-19. We are just deeply soaking in the presence of God, drawn near to God, God drawn near to us, manifest through us, and defeating all the COVID-19 uh, uh, viruses flying in the whole world. We stop them from flying. In the mighty name of Jesus, what would you say? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now then, uh, Hebrews 9, verses 11 to 12. Now in the Old Testament, finally when they went into Canaan, and, uh, or even before Canaan, during their Exodus journey, they have the temporary temple called Tabernacle. So, once a year, the high priest will carry uh, blood of the sacrifice of the whole nation to, to go right until the innermost part of Holy of Holies where the glory of God stays. Moment by moment, those things. Not uh, only at the occasion it manifests, the glory of God stays there. Alright? And uh, above it, uh, it, it is a glory pillar in the night. And in the day is a glory, uh, it's a pillar of cloud, pillar of glory, glory cloud. So presence of God was with them. So when the high priest had brought in the blood, uh, and by the time he walked out at the gate of the tabernacle, he was saying, it is finished. He's declaring to the whole Israel, all your sin and judgment and consequences of sin and judgment is over, is gone. So when Jesus died on the cross, after six hours of shedding blood, that was the word he said. Not just as a star, not just that his history, because he got another role. He was not just the Lamb of God. He was also the high priest who offered the blood. This is what the Bible said. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come. With the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with his hand, uh, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calf, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. So Christ was both the Lamb of God and the High Priest. He took his sinless blood into the heavenly tabernacle and completed a job called salvation, redemption. <laughs> and he did it only once. High priest in the Old Testament time, they got to do it in the morning, in the night, uh, Sabbath day, and especially the once a year, a total day, the day of Calvary. But now we do it because our high priest is effective. He carried the blood and the holy place once and for all. Amen? Only the second time. So today, when we commemorate what Jesus had done, like this morning we had the Holy Communion, that is not re-offering uh, the Lamb of God, no. That is just commemorating, but it's a spiritual act. Uh, so when you eat the bread, it's a spiritual act of believing, partaking of what Jesus had done on the cross. It was broken to make you wholesome, so you receive the wholesomeness. You receive the abundant life. You receive the healing. You receive the divine protection. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. When you drink the, the, the when you drink from the cup, when Jesus said, you know, this is the blood of the new covenant, he's not saying that you know the juice became our blood. No. Not this kind of superstitious. 
understand it, but rather the blood that he has shed is represented by that blood. When you partake of it, it's a spiritual act of receiving. Uh, you, anything you dare to eat, this you dare to receive. <laughs> so you receive uh, the effect of the blood of the new covenant. Forgiving all your sins, declare that you are holy and righteous before God, you are accepted before God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That blood is very powerful. Eternally, it has overcome Satan, overcome sin, overcome sicknesses, death, and poverty, failure, shame. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, uh, Hebrews 10, verses 11 to 14, the last scripture this morning. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. Why did they still do it? That was every time when they did it, they looked forward for the Lamb of God, the one and final blood sacrifice to come. But he has come 2,000 plus years ago. But this man, after he offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sacrificed. So it's just one offering. By one offering of the Lamb of God, Father God has perfected you forever. This is what the scripture said. Uh, after you are born again, you know, uh, you reflect more and more of Christ who is in you, but you can still fail. You can still feel discouraged. You can still doubt about some of the things in the Bible. Sometimes uh, you lost control of your anger. You might have, you know, uh, uh, think bad of people, think the worst to happen of people. Well, um, but the blood of Jesus can forgive that particular sin. Amen. Because the blood of Jesus covers all sin. Please do not think that. The blood of Christ is a license for you to sin. No, it covers all sin. That's all. Don't take too further, too much further, because it can trouble our reasoning. So I thank God that by this one offering, God has perfected us forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So our spirit, which was dead in trespasses, is born again, and our sins are forgiven. Praise the Lord. Now remember, the last thing I want to say again is, remember your this uh, birthright in Jesus Christ. All right, all your sins are forgiven. You are perfected. Yeah, you can draw near to God. God will sure draw near to you. When He draws near to you, it's a real God. He manifests. He manifests His healing, His power, His glory, His kingdom. So the Holy Spirit you will definitely flow out. You need to make a choice. When, when the presence of the Holy Spirit flow out to you, where is your target? Now our target uh, is our homeland here. Let this blood of the Lamb destroy COVID-19. Let this blood of the Lamb, which these two months out we must do together, to restore. Only the blood of the Lamb can restore, can give healing, Restoration, new faith, new hope. Amen. So I believe the new normal will be a big thing that we have never thought of. I think life will be changed completely. Now I find that you know, more and more people shopping online. More and more people you know, uh, uh, deliver what you order to your doorstep. Yes. There's more and more using the electric, uh, electronic gadget by your handphone and all the apps, banking. Yeah. So it can be even more, even big financing, big marketing, big investment. You can go online. Yeah, crypto finance, crypto economy. There is a 
that there is a real challenge. For many people like me, you know, learning this thing is not easy. I just believe today we focus on the blood of Jesus for it to come and cover our loved ones, cover our nation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Shaka ba 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 kara ba 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 kara ba ba ba. Just pray in the spirit. Oh, kara ba ba ba. We thank you, Lord, Father God, for the downtrend of this COVID nineteen, not just in our nation, but it's throughout the world. Lord, even though it's downtrend in America, USA itself, every day they still have more than five, fifty thousand new cases. Oh Lord, we just believe some of these uh, damages as caused could be permanent forever. But you are still the God of healing, you are still the God of restoration. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Bakaranda, Bakaranda, Bakaranda. Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. You are the Lord of the world. Thank you, Lord. You have become the Lamb of God and the blood that you shed that forgiven all our sins. And has transferred the righteousness of God into our life. We are now no longer dead in trespasses. We are born again. We are forgiven. We draw near to you. Not this time, not just for ourselves. We draw near to you. Grow in our heart. For Malaysia, for Southeast Asia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, not just healing for the people, but healing for the economies. Healing for the nations. Yeah. Oh, Bakaranda, 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 Bakaranda. Lord, we bring the blood of the Lamb of God to cover our mind, our soul against every fear. Your perfect love cast out fear, Lord Jesus, you look at you. You are the perfect love of God. We receive you. You cast out every fear in our mind, in our heart. Lord, we report there are variants of this disease. We just don't want to fear. We don't want to fear. We have angels and camp with us. Young Lord, we believe in every promise of divine security in Psalm 91. Your angels dwelling with us, moving with us, protecting us. Oh, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. We bless your holy name. Yeah, shaka ba ba ba, shaka ba 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 Father God, as we are battling, fighting at the spiritual frontier, Lord, some of us have encountered the attack of sickness and other things. Lord, we would give in, we defeat them, we overcome all these attacks by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. God has given us authority to bless one another, especially those who are called to serve God. We must practice this of this way of blessing one another in the spirit. Now before the benediction, whether you are worshipping with us uh, online or you are here in the church, lay a hand on your heart to receive as I bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Really, God is not just blessing you. He keep you, He sustain you. 
He protects you. And the Lord made His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yeah, God's face is full of glory. Let that glory shine at you now. Shine your spirit, your soul, and your body. Shine all your organs, shine your blood, every cell. Yeah, the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. I bless you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And you say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless all of you.